All right, all right, all right. Thank you very much for hanging out, guys, and welcome to the Pig Daily. Today, we're going to be looking at a beginner Terran mech opening. So, yet another very simple daily. Remember, this is recommended for players who are either brand new to competitive RTS or in bronze or silver. However, you can use this opening if you want something very sort of general. Uh, right through to Master League, potentially. It's something which will just be covering the first few minutes of the game. You're opening, giving you a solid basis, building up a lot of workers, and it will work across all three matchups. However, because of that, you know, working across all three matchups, across all situations, there are going to be ways that you need to adjust and adapt and play differently. Maybe it's a little bit more important to Hellion Harass versus Zerg. Maybe it's a little bit more important to turtle up a bit versus Protoss once they start getting out War Prisms and upgrades. You guys are going to need to use your own understanding, your own way of understanding the game and reacting and adjusting to figure things out. But this is a very solid mech opening. It should work out quite well. Of course, before we jump into the actual show, I do want to say, guys, go and watch daily number 16. If you haven't already, hopping into 1v1 for the first time, if you're a brand new player, talking about supply and building workers and all that sort of stuff, going to take that as assumed knowledge for this daily. So if you haven't watched it, go and watch it now. But for now, let's take a look at the build. All right, all right, all right. So we're going to hop into game now and take a look at this build order. As always, with any Terran opening, you want to rally that first SCV over towards your ramp. Because that is going to be, be beginning your wall off and starting up your first depot. Of course, you've got another SCV queued up. Never breaking SCV production. It's our most essential rule. And we can grab a 15 gas first. All right. So this SCV that finishes the depot is going to sit around for a little bit and then I'll wait um, to have the money to build the barracks. Nice and simple. So this is the exact same as your standard um, your standard opening that you'll see a lot of pro pros doing. Um, just a gas first expand build. Nothing crazy in the initial opening. The big part where we're going to kind of veer off what is the standard. And uh, by the way, let's rally the 17th SCV across the map to be a scout. Okay, cue that up. Um, the, the big area, of course, where this veers off is right when we decide to go, you know what, let's build a second factory and let's really focus on Hellions and tanks, the, the core of any mech army. And we are going to play a non-Starport style as well, which um, might seem a little bit weird if you watch a lot of pro mech play as they're very Starport reliant, but those units are always very micro-intensive, take a lot of APM. So here on 19 Supply, Orbital Command and a Reaper. And we are going to start a Reaper with this build. We didn't start a Reaper with our bio build but that's because the reaper it's going to give us a little bit of scouting and it meshes well with the hellions we want to be building so just getting out a reaper makes a lot more sense with this opening as it's something which is going to always just help out your hellions a little bit and be a useful unit now with your stv after you're done scouting you can always hide that behind your opponent's third or fourth base to try and get some follow-up scouting a little bit later and you want to go directly into Reactor once that first Reaper's out. First Reaper, I'm just going to put on the Watchtower for now. He can scout a little bit later. 22 Supply, we go for a Depot. Second Depot to finish the wall off. And then right after, we go for a second Gas. All right. Now, notice I've built the factory right next to the barracks because you're just going to swap onto that Reactor immediately. Really want to get double Hellion production going as soon as possible. And this SCV that's building the factory can just rally there. So we're going to swap over these. And all right. So we start that second factory as well as Hellion production, both around that same time as soon as we can. And we're going to build a tech lab on the barracks, which the factory, uh, the second factory, sorry, will be swapping onto. Now, around three minutes, you want to go in either with your Reaper or this hidden SDV scout, and you want to check if they've expanded. Nice little most important scouting info. If they haven't expanded, then... Usually you will freak out and build some bunkers and make sure you protect your high ground and don't really commit too many SCVs to the low ground. But in this case, 
because this isn't easy, easy AI, I'm going to play this as if I have seen an expansion there. So this is the more standard situation where your opponent's expanding, they're not going crazy. And here we go, guys. Tank production will start up. So double Hellions tanks. Also, if you see an all-in, um, you might want to add a few Cyclones in rather than Hellions. So Cyclones are a very beefy, kind of very well-rounded unit. Now, you do want to start up SC, uh, Depot production anywhere from about 35 supply onwards. Mine are just a few seconds late, and you can see I'm ever so slightly supply blocked here. I'm just hitting the supply block now. My unit's finished building just before that Depot finished. So anywhere from 35 supply. And you just want to keep building these depots because these Hellions really do chew up a lot. Okay, so next up, you're going to go for a third command center. So as you get the money, and this will usually be about 55 supply about here at 4 minutes 30 once you get really good at executing the build. After that, third CC, we are going to get an armory started. And here it's 63, 64 supply. Just after we get that armory, we're going to go for double gas on our natural expansion. Gas is so important as a mech player. You really need that. So we're just going to continue to build tanks for now. Um, we do need more depots. A little bit slow to continue my depot production. So you want to put guys on gas immediately, of course, as always. And the next big thing you need to think about is adding the rest of your factories. Because right now we've still only got two factories. You can't really build an army very lot, uh, very quickly with this. So you want to go, okay, let's start building tech labs on that barracks and let's go for a triple factory. Um, of course, got to start plus one vehicle weapons. Weapons is way more important than armor with mech, but you do still want to get armor a little bit later. And yeah, you can see I'm going to build at least two tech labs. It's up to you if you want to go double reactor, three tech labs, or four tech labs, one reactor. But it's more important to have tech labs than reactors. Because you've got this one reacted barracks from much earlier in the game, which is pumping out all these Hellions. But it's not as important to be able to replenish those. Now, right after you start all those extra factories, you do want to start an engineering bay. You'll see these tech labs are finished. And that's going to provide some nice... I'm going to put a second reactor down just to make make this production a little bit easier. You can even float your barracks off to scout if you want at this point, since you've got pretty much as many factories as you'll need for quite a while. Five factory production is pretty intense. And you've done it, guys. Uh, as soon as the engineering bay finishes, you can build a few missile turrets everywhere. Because keep in mind, nothing shoots up in this army. <laughs> and that's it. You'll go take your third base. Um, you can rally all your command centers over there. You can start building more Thors as you've got armories done. You do want to queue up a second armory as well, by the way, after your turrets go down. So that way you can start double upgrades. And yeah, you just start building, you know, three, four uh, tanks and Thors at a time, four Hellions at a time. And from here, you really take it whichever way you want. Unmutes the mic, there we go. So I just pre-recorded that last little couple of minutes there um, because I have quite a few little things to talk about now on top of the actual core build order, guys. So let's hop into game and let's talk about a couple things. So the first one is wall-offs. Now, the number of times I have seen people do a wall-off like this is insane. And you're like, units could just come through there. That's not a wall-off. So just make sure your walls are always overlapping, your depots. So notice here, I've got the build grid turned on, something I always talk about, but people uh, often don't know. Display build grid, tick that. Make sure that is ticked. If that's not ticked, you're going to have a hard time placing buildings. And uh, yeah, make sure you place everything correctly. You'll notice here, same with these buildings. These are two hexes, depots and add-ons. So it's the same sort of method for walling off with them. And you always want to kind of find where that is, and you're always overlapping one square. And then you can, you know, overlap one, overlap one square that way. Or you can overlap one square that way. But this is how you create a solid wall. 
And also for staying safe, I mentioned talking about scouting at three minutes for an expansion. What else is very important? Don't just sit your units at the front like this. Your first tank should siege up like inside your main base, like up here or down here, somewhere where it's very hard to be killed. This is really important because if you don't do this, keep in mind you're not pumping out units very fast, right? As a mech player, you've got a few very powerful units which can defend an all-in, right? So you've got to keep them far back. So if you're ever surprised by something and your tanks are just sitting there next to a half-finished wall and lings run in and kill them, you can just lose the game. But as long as you've always got a very safe fallback point, behind the main wall as well. And some people will just leave a siege tank back here all game. That's gonna really give you just a sort of anchor to make sure you're safe. So that's important. Keeping your tank sieged whenever you're not watching is important as a beginner player. Um, and if you're not, you know, really running around doing counter attacks and all that sort of stuff, the moment your armories are done, always leave your Hellions in Hellbat form. And if you're a re relatively new player, feel free to stop building Hellions and to start building Hellbats. As I said before, mix in Cyclones if you ever need something a little bit, you know, meatier, quickly, a more generic unit that's very good. Hellions will only really outperform Cyclones against Zerglings, uh, and even then that's only once they're in Hellbat form. So pretty much every other scenario you're going to be wanting Cyclones instead, as long as you've got the money to afford them as they are such an expensive unit. Now the other thing um, we want to be looking at is... What was it? Oh my god, my brain is, is so switched off. Happy Easter, by the way, guys. I just had like an awesome weekend. <laughs> my brain is still in slow mode. Um, yeah, so gas does pray, take, take priority. The other thing is um, Hellion scouting. That's what I wanted to talk about. And um, generally using them for map control. Because this is a situation where, as I said at the start, you're going to need to adjust based on the situation, based on the matchup, based on how you like to play the game. Okay, cool. So, what does that mean? It means you've got this very mobile, fast unit, the Hellion. You can roast this shit out of workers. You can run in there and do massive damage. Against a Zerg player, it's very important to be kind of poking with those Hellions a little bit and checking that they're expanding, seeing what's going on. But you can also, if you prefer and you're someone who really feels the need to or you just like that stuff, you can do some dive-ins with Hellions early on. Your first six Hellions, you can try to dive into your opponent's base and kill some workers if they're not ready for it. As long as you've got the APM for that. For a starting out beginning player, I'm not saying this is something you should definitely do every game, but there's a lot of different variations you can do with your Hellions, and at the very least, you should be keeping your Hellions kind of on the watchtowers, on the map. Use their mobility so that you can see things coming your way. Having a good bit of map vision just by having your Hellions on the map, it's going to give you a good way of kind of seeing what your opponent's up to. You can poke in, get a glimpse of their army without taking too much damage, and simply back off with them. So that's going to be awesome. Now, what about the other thing? Well, I talked about adding Engineering Bay and Turrets after you go up to five factories, but... What if you are dying a lot to very fast Mutalisks? What if you are dying a lot to very fast Banshees? Something like that. This is something which is always going to come up. And this is not something which you can always be 100% safe as a beginning player. Because that's not StarCraft. And this is something which needs to get kind of drilled into everybody that plays StarCraft. Is this idea of you don't actually need to know everything that's going on. And you don't need to be safe against everything that's going on. So... This is a sort of weird thing to already be introducing players to, but there is this idea that you don't want to just be building blind missile turrets at three minutes into every game because technically this one guy did this really well-refined GM level proxy banshee rush to you one game. You actually want to play a little bit greedy against it and accept that one in 20 games, something like that, someone will have that super fast air rush that gets there before you're ready and does damage to you. But as you improve, you'll naturally find ways to deal with this stuff by recognizing through scouting, doing damage to them through pressure and these sort of things. So you can definitely start to look around. If you are a player, though, who is like actually facing air and it's coming out a lot before your missile turrets are ready, here's an adjustment for you. So let's hop back into game. Uh, ignore the game time. Obviously, there's a bit of a weird scenario. What you want to do is you want to actually try and drop a scan at about the five minute mark sometimes even a little bit earlier. And you basically just drop it between your opponent's two bases. Depending on what their race is, it's always a little bit different where you want to scan. And you want to try and see what their tech is. And if you see Stargate tech, if you see 
uh, anything like that, then that's going to be, you know, a big, big problem, right? If you see a spire that's already halfway done, you go, okay, let's speed up my engineering bay. Let's get that out. If you see a starport with a tech lab and that tech lab is upgrading, you're like, oh God, okay, he's making, he's making banshees. Let's, let's speed up our engineering bay and missile turrets. And on top of all this, guys, there is one other adjustment specifically for when you're playing Protoss because Protoss have lasers and lasers are fucking bullshit, man. <laughs> and that is you are going to build two Widow Mines nice and early. Now, why are you building two Widow Mines, guys? This is because this will protect you from oracles. So if you don't have any anti-air, which you don't with this build, what can ruin your day? Well, you know, a Banshee could show up and do a bit of damage before you get a missile turret down, but that hits a little bit later usually. It's, um, and it's, it's nowhere near as devastating. Our uh, muters could hit. That's always going to be way later, but Protoss can very easily build a Stargate, get an Oracle. So after you've got four or six Hellions out, or sometimes even before that, if you want, you could, uh, actually let's, let's just say two Hellions. I'll make you guys a hundred percent safe against Protoss Oracles. You build two Widow Mines and you borrow one in each mineral line. You do that. And that's going to protect you from oracles. It's going to keep you safe from that. Of course, you'll still be slightly vulnerable to Dark Templar, but you do have scans on your orbitals. And uh, as you get better at your scouting and all of that sort of stuff, you'll naturally start to figure it out anyway. So it should be good fun. All right, guys. So this is by no means a build order, which is just going to magically win you every game you ever play. That's StarCraft. Um, this is an opening. This is a guide for the first few minutes for you guys who are keen to play mech and to start just getting into the game. Um, it's a good sort of well-rounded way to play as this multiple factory, very meaty Hellbat tank army. And I guess actually one last point, one last point. I remember I did want to talk about this quickly, which is when you're getting used to it as a new player, there's something you do need to focus on. And that is just how to actually, you know, kill your opponent. And what you want to be doing is you want to basically get used to leapfrogging your tank. So like I said, as soon as you can make Hellbats, and what I really advise is trying to push your opponent really hard with your tank Hellbat before they get out big amounts of Immortals, big amounts of, um, you know, I don't know, Ultralisks or Brood Lords or anything that starts to make your life a bit more awkward and hard. Because as a beginning mech player, the most important thing for you to get good at is a tank push. So what you need to get good at is let's imagine my opponent's army is here. You need to siege up your tanks. A lot of people like to have their tanks on a separate hotkey. That can work, cool. But the most important thing is to get your leapfrog down. And this is where you actually use shift a lot. So you go unsiege, and I've already told them to siege. Notice I'm not doing anything. And oh my god, they're magically sieging up on their own. So it's siege, shift, unsiege. Sh unsiege, shift, siege. Unsiege, shift, siege. Unsiege, shift, siege. Unsiege, siege, shift, siege. Shift siege. <laughs> I'm not even speaking my words properly. And you can see the tanks are just automatically going to kind of move themselves forward. Because if all of your tanks are ever on siege, your army is worth dog shit. If all your tanks are sieged, your army is worth awesome source. Now, I don't know if you guys are very good at maths, but awesome source is larger a larger number than dog shit. So you'd much rather your army be awesome source than dog shit. That's, that's generally the Starcraft math that we like to do. And that's, that's how it works. So getting good at your leapfrog with your tanks and pushing in decisively with a big Hellbat tank push in the mid game is going to be a very important way when you're first starting out to try and kill your opponent with a mech style. Um, once again, just to go back to the whole, this army doesn't shoot up. Well, what does shoot up? Thors. So once you get an armory, you can always start adding Thors and more Widow Mines in, and that's going to make your army much more well-rounded. All right, guys. So that's going to finish up for now. Um, this one was a little bit, you know, sloppily planned, uh, in terms of, I didn't, I didn't pre-record everything this time. I pre-recorded like the five minute build order and nothing else, but I just wanted to kind of go through and, and show you guys this beginner mech opening. Um, tomorrow I'm going to be starting up talking about how to improve at Starcraft and it's going to be, it, it started out as a beginner basics, um, focused idea, but I very quickly realized it's something that even very high level players can benefit from. So I might not necessarily stick it with that tag of, um, of beginner basics, but we're going to have a whole series of videos coming out over the next week. Uh, talking about the general idea of improving, talking about the ideas behind it and the mindset, and then going into how to improve macro, how to improve micro, how to improve um, your scouting, how to improve your understanding of the other races and kind of going through all these different points and drawing a lot from my coaching experiences and looking at a lot of different players and even pro players and their kind of skills and how sometimes they're skewed one direction over the other and how you can kind of 
even those out a little bit. Um, so that's going to be fun. Don't, don't forget to send me replays for Icy Fire as well, guys. Uh, I cast your freaking awesome replays. This week's challenge is fainting tactics. So any, any time where you attack, you know, you pretend to attack one place and then you attack another, big fake drops is the big example I've given as that's the most obvious fainting maneuver is you send empty drops to pull their army out of position and then you hit somewhere else. But really any, any really well executed multi-prong where you're using small attacks to pull your opponent out of position and then run your main army in is really good. For instance, think about it when you run 20 Zerglings in or something, you pull their army out and then your Lurkers run in between their bases and burrow so they can't get back to defend their bases. Anything crazy like that. Send me your replays. Um, even it, even just generic hitting from all angles is kind of fainting tactics as long as you, you know, you're pulling units back here and there and you're being clever about it. So send me your replays, it should be awesome. Um, thanks for hanging out guys. Remember there's no absolute guide to winning Starcraft. Um, so for you guys who are beginners, you know, you're going to fall in love with it. Just be critical, use your own, your own thought process, your own problem solving, um, get on the forums, ask questions there as well and all that sort of stuff. So that's all for now, guys. Don't forget to hug a watermelon, kick a walrus, and of course, punch a garden gnome in the gonads. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye and good night.